All right, how you guys doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you. And in vi this video, we're gonna take a look at logarithmic functions. Now in particular, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a domain of the logarithmic function shown below. And this is gonna be a very straightforward process. Now this piece right here, this x plus three, a lot of times in some textbooks, they'll refer to that as the argument. And the argument has got to be greater than zero. It's got to be positive. So all you're going to do for this is just take x plus 3, set it greater than zero, and when you solve that, you end up with x has to be greater than negative 3, which means your domain is going to be all real numbers such that negative 3 would go here, and then infinity would go there. So that's going to be the domain for this particular logarithmic function, and hopefully that makes sense to you. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a second example. Here in this example, we've got g of x equals log base 3 of x squared. Again, my x squared part, that's my argument, and that piece has to be greater than 0. Now here's where a lot of students will forget something from Algebra 2, because you don't always work with inequalities and squared solving inequalities that are squared. So when you do this, you're going to set this up. x is going to be less than 0, and x is going to be greater than 0. Now when you do that, so this, when you solve this, you'll end up with these two inequalities. Now x is less than 0, that piece of it gives you from negative infinity right to 0. And then x is greater than 0 is going to be from 0 to infinity. So your domain is going to be the combination of both of those pieces. So the domain for this logarithmic function is going to be from negative infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity. So here's our third and final example for finding the domain of the logarithmic function. Now when you have a fraction as your argument, what you're going to do is take the numerator, x plus 2, and set that greater than 0. Of course, when you solve for this, you'll get x is greater than negative 2. Now, the second thing you have to pay attention to is the denominator. Now, the denominator can't be 0, so x minus 2 cannot equal 0. When you solve that, you get the value of 2. So x can't have a value of 2. Now, what you have to do next is actually test these values. And so what you're going to do is you're going to make a number line. And you're going to put negative 2 in one spot and positive 2 in the other spot. So as you can see we've got our number line divided up into three distinct sections. So what you're going to do is pick a number from each one of those sections and plug it in up here to our fraction. So if I plug in negative 3, if I let x be negative 3, then I end up with something that is going to be positive. I don't really care about the value so much as I do the sign of what I get when I plug in negative 3. So in this piece right here, this is positive, which means that it's going to be true because my argument, remember, the x plus 2 part over x minus 2, that piece has to be positive. It's got to be greater than 0. Now in our middle section here, if I plug in a number between negative 2 and positive 2, so this time I'm going to say, all right, let, let x be 0. So when you plug in 0 in the numerator, you'll just get 2, and in the denominator, you'll get negative 2. That gives me a value that's negative. So in this area right here, between negative 2 and 2, that is negative, which implies that that is not a solution because we have a negative value within that region, so that is not positive. And then lastly, we'll go ahead and we'll pick a value greater than 2. So we're going to look at our third region here. And this time I'm going to say let x equal 3. Then you can pick any number you want greater than 2. Now again, if I put in 3 for x, I'll have 3 plus 2 over 3 minus 2. I don't really care about, care about the value so much as I do the sign. So 3 plus 2, that's positive. 3 minus 2, that's positive. So at the end, this component right here, that piece is going to be positive. So from this test that I just did, I can see the regions where my domain is going to be. So my final answer for this is going to be the domain of negative infinity to negative 2 and 2 to infinity. 
So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. By now, you should be able to find the domain of the logarithmic function. Thanks for watching, and you guys have a great day. Peace out.